In this video, I'm going to give you 18 different tips, 18 different ways that you can get more from your next open house and know it has nothing to do with cookies or balloons. What is going on, my, guys? My name is Chris Elliott, team leader at the Elliott Real Estate Team based out of Glen Elm, Virginia. Let's jump right into the meat of the, uh, the message here. So we're going to break this down into three different sections, preparation, what to do at the open house, and then what to do after the open house. So preparation, you'll notice this is where the majority of this, these tips lie. So number one, ideally, we want to have our open houses posted into the multiple listing service immediately after our listings are activated, which means that we've got to decide before our listings get activated when we're going to be doing an open house. We don't want to be deciding on Thursday, Friday, we got to be Saturday that we're going to be hosting an open house that Sunday, right? So we've got to plan a little bit in advance. Now, if these are not your properties that you are holding open, what you could do is you can go to the other agents on your team and your brokerage, find out what listings they have coming available and make sure that those listings get posted MLS in the MLS immediately after the listings are active. The reason this is super important is when a listing first gets uh, activated, that's when it's got the most visibility. It emails out to all the prospective buyers in the marketplace. Zillow pushes it out, realtor.com pushes it out, all the third party websites push it out. And ideally, you want to have your open house posted right there when they see your listing, as opposed to them checking it after the fact, and which may or may not happen, and they may not see your open house. So ideally, you want to have that pushed out um, when you activate the listing. Secondly, you want to notify all of the agents in the marketplace that your listing is going to be active. That way they can send their clientele directly to it or mention that to their clients just so you can get more people at the open house, okay? Third, we want to prioritize holding our newer listings open. Your new listings are the ones that are going to get the most uh, activity at the open houses. Typically, uh, if a property's been on the market a couple weeks, couple months, you're probably not going to get as much activity on that open house. Next, you want to study that listing prior to the open house, especially if it's your listing, but even if it's not your listing, realize that when folks come into that open house, they're going to be looking at you as the expert. And if they ask you a question about the property, you do not want to be sit there and just say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know that, or I'm sorry, I'm not the listing agent, right? Immediately, your value drops tremendously in their eyes. So you want to stay that listing as much as possible. And then what I always do is I'll print off the agent long MLS sheet. So even if I don't know the question off the top of my head, I can pull out my cheat sheet at the open house and I can answer those questions for any prospective buyers, keeps their, uh, their opinion of me at a high level, which is where you want it. Secondly, you also want to study the comps in the area. So run a quick market analysis on the property, run the comps, print off a quick CMA on the, uh, the comps in the neighborhood. So that way you can speak knowledgeably about properties in the neighborhood. Realize that if you're talking to neighbors, if you're talking to the buyers that are looking at that at home, odds are they know a good bit about a market, potentially even more about that micro market than you might if you're just hosting a, a random open house on one of your listings or one of your you know, colleagues' listings in an area that you don't pay that much attention to. You've got buyers coming in that are looking intently in that area. You've got neighbors that look in the area. You don't want them knowing more about the market than you do. Okay. We want to get our signs out as early as possible. Once again, this goes back to making sure you're planning your open houses a week in advance or early in the week. Ideally, you want to have your listings, uh, your signs out by Thursday, if possible. Some, you know, homeowners associations won't let you put them out till Friday, but you want to have these out a couple of days in advance. Get the visibility, not only to direct people to the open house, but get the visibility on your signs and your name within the neighborhood. Also with signs, we want to put out 15 to 20 signs, which is probably more than you're putting out right now, potentially, right? If we're only putting out two or three signs, that's not going to get the job done. We want to have overkill. This is a tremendous, relatively cheap branding opportunity for you and your business. So make sure you're putting out more signs than you think you need. I would recommend creating an event page on Facebook, which you can do if you've got a business Facebook page and invite your personal Facebook self to that, which will notify in all of your contacts notifications that you're hosting an event or you're going to an event, just free visibility on that open house and on the fact, reminding your, your, your sphere of influence on social media that you are in the business. And then last but not least, if you want to put some money behind it, you can run paid ads 
for your open house in a 15 mile radius. Uh, or if you want to get super fancy, you can export your uh, CRM database into a custom audience in Facebook or meta ad platform and run a targeted ad to your, uh, your database. That's another topic for another video. So that's all the work you can do in preparation. When we're actually at the open house, we want to get there early, get there at least an hour early. What that's going to do, that's going to allow you enough time to post to social media. I'd recommend doing a, you know, Instagram, Facebook story, announcing the open house, letting people kind of handing through the home, showing people a home, uh, do a reel, do something, uh, use that as a content opportunity while you're at that open house. Uh, have marketing materials out for not only the house itself, but for your services and helping folks buy and sell. You can have just straight up branding pieces. You can have content marketing pieces, but you want to leverage that open house as an opportunity to not only sell that house, but to market your own self. I'm going to recommend that you door knock at least five different uh, neighbors in the neighborhood, right? That's why we want to get there early. So it's a good opportunity to engage the neighbors, invite them to the open house, but also get in discussion as to whether or not they've had any thoughts of selling in this market when homes are selling very quickly. Naturally, when one home sells, typically another house in the neighborhood is going to sell soon thereafter. So you want to be the agent that's in front of them. You want to be the agent capturing their contact information, keeping them abreast of the sale. Okay. When folks come to the open house, I want to greet them at the door and I want to sign them in. So I'm not giving them the pen and say, hey, jot down your name. I'm not handing them an iPad and having them sign in or not sign in. I'm going to, I have a digital open house sign in form on my phone and I'm going to ask them for their name, for their phone number, for their email address, um, and, and I'm going to get them signed in. We want to capture this contact information as opposed to just being you know, lax about it and having folks come to you, I think you're not going to get as high as a conversion rate if you don't get people to sign in, okay? I would also recommend having a digital sign-in process that connects those folks directly into your CRM. So we've got a really cool thing through our CRM where we can sign people into our open house. It immediately dumps them into the database and kicks off an action plan so that we are prompted to follow up with those people. Very, very powerful, okay? I would also recommend catching people as they leave, try to engage, it, engage them in conversation, ask them for their feedback, and most importantly, try to book an appointment straight from the open house, right? If you can get them into a buyer consultation, get them into a seller consultation, get them into a market analysis appointment, book an appointment to show them another property, that is a golden opportunity. It's another good reason to study the market because if I can take them from my open house and say, hey, you guys seen the property down the street, I'm done here at three o'clock. Would you guys like to see that at three thirty? It's a very, very powerful opportunity to book an appointment straight from the open house. And then, last but not least, some of our open houses are slow. I'd recommend you bring work to do at the open house instead of just wasting that time. You know, scrolling TikTok, scrolling Instagram. Bring your laptop, bring your CRM, make phone calls, do reach outs, put some work in. When you're at the open house, you might as well, right? And then, lastly, is what to do at the open house. I would recommend that you follow up with these leads, leads immediately. If you need follow up with them on Sunday, follow up with them on Sunday. It, it, at worst case scenario, follow up with them on Monday. Don't let these leads get cold. They will forget about you. And then follow up, follow up, follow up. Realize that the majority of folks that come out to open houses are going to do something, right? They're showing the intent that they're coming out. A lot of those folks are six to 18 months out from actually pulling the trigger and transacting in some form or fashion. So if you're giving up uh, on people after one or two reach outs because they don't answer, or they're not ready, I think you're making a huge mistake. Make sure you're playing the long game, follow up with those folks and actually convert them and make it a good use of your time. So I actually gave you 19 tips. I hope this was powerful. If you have any questions, concerns, shoot me a DM, throw it in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you next week.